A couple of weeks back, we reviewed the updated Toyota Innova. Now, because of what the car means to Filipinos, and to be honest, what the car actually can do for Filipinos, I gave it its rightful praises. I mean, it's just right. It's completely understandable why so many Filipino families want that car. However, some consumers want a more premium feel without sacrificing versatility. Basically, they want a better ride, better tech, better interior, without sacrificing a ridiculously frugal diesel engine and, well, seven seats. Just then, Honda sat up and said, wait a tick, we've got something up our sleeves. Facelifted for 2021, this is the CRV. The facelifted fifth-generation diesel seven-seater dominates the range with three trim levels, the V, S, and this SX all-wheel drive. The advantage of being both aspirational and pragmatic, however, doesn't exactly exclude it from a higher price range. Now, this SX model comes in at 2,158,000 Philippine pesos, but if you're willing to part with some conveniences and some flex and, of course, an all-wheel drive system, you can pick one up on autodeal.com.ph for 1,888,000 Philippine pesos. Autodeal.com.ph can connect you to get the best quote from multiple dealerships near you. You can request and compare quotes from any dealership in the Philippines. Get the best deal with Autodeal. Up and down the current line of the CRV, though, save a couple of color options, the exterior is actually identical. The changes from the previous generation start with less chrome on the front grille and a bumper with a lower half with more black cladding than body color. It's also laden with LEDs from its sequential turn signals down to its fog lamps and everything else in between. Now, down the side, persons with OCD may find the camera that sticks out of the side mirror, which activates every time you indicate to the right, a bit bothersome. But to be honest with you, tight street and Dennis Leary drivers out there, that thing's worth it. Roof rails add to its refined but aggressive look. Ground clearance is a healthy 208 millimeters, which is 10 more than the other models down the line with disc brakes all around. My qualm, however, are these 18 inch daisy looking alloys, which uh, are wrapped by 60 series tires. They don't really do much for the ego. They're nothing spectacular, and I wish that they did change it. I mean, the previous generation had better looking ones, but I guess, yeah, they got the job done. With the rear pretty much unchanged, open her up with the power tailgate, and it will reveal, well, really not much, about 150 liters of space. That's with the third row up. When you do fold the third row, you're looking at a little bit more than 450, and then if you fold the second row, you're looking at over 900 liters of space. What's nice, though, is that this false bottom can go low or high depending on your needs. And it may not be much, but it's really a great space saver. Okay, so seven seats, sort of. Look, you know how some Porsches are like two plus two? This is more like a five plus two kind of a thing. Now, there are bottle holders back here and massive air vents, but really the seats back here are for, well, smaller people and for just really trips around the block. I will give this to Honda, however, because ingress and egress is like super easy. Adjustable, spacious, and not bolstered to the rafters, you can definitely seat three adults in here and keep them comfortable too with air vents found in the back and down up front. Toys include two USB charging points found down below, which are both 2.5 amperes, I must add. You've got tweeters on either door with speakers on either door. Oh, and not to mention, you also have a sunroof up on top so that you can tell when planes go by if it's a commercial plane or if it's a male plane or if it's a female plane. Ooh. Ooh. I don't get it. Dude, male plane. Female plane. Oh my god. What? Is that Tutito? And lest we forget, there's also a center armrest with two cup holders. One last thing, and this is actually kind of big. Check this out. When you open the door, look at that angle. It's a 90 degree angle. This thing opens wider than the front doors themselves, which makes loading stuff inside the second row a heck of a lot easier, whether you're loading passengers or cargo. 
Now, if it wasn't for the fact that I drove the previous generation, I may have freaked out thinking, oh God, I broke the car. Now, if you're not a fan of the buttons and electronic gear selector, and I don't know why you wouldn't be because it only takes like a day or two to get used to, there's always the gasoline variant. But then there are other people out there that will say, ah, oh, it's not a real automobile because there's no lever. Okay, so what do you call McLarens and Ferraris and GMCs and Volvos and whatnot? An all-digital instrument cluster, color display I might add, sits in the background of a multi-button steering wheel with cruise, trip, and audio controls. The center is a 7-inch touchscreen with a multi-reverse camera with nav, Android Auto, and Apple CarPlay, which sits above the pretty simple air controls. It can be argued as a gimmick, but I think the wireless charging pad and the subtle four wood panels, which are polar opposites really, just add flavor to the cabin. I'll tell you what isn't a gimmick, the amount of tech and features inside this thing. You ready? <sighs> the Honda CR-V SX is equipped with driver, front passenger side and curtain airbags, ABS, hill start assist, vehicle stability assist, emergency stop signal, corner sensors, tire pressure warning, agile handling assist, Honda sensing which includes adaptive cruise control, low speed follow, collision mitigation, braking system, lane keep assist, road departure mitigation, forward collision warning, lane departure warning, and elastic status. <gasps> oh my god. <sighs> Woo. <laughs> if you do like our videos, consider subscribing to our channel because we create them just for you. It was fabulous when it was first introduced and it's still fabulous today. That diesel engine up front is a four-cylinder turbo diesel that produces 118 horses and 300 newton meters of torque. All from a 1.6 liter four-cylinder double overhead cam ID Tech turbo engine mated to a nine-speed automatic transmission. Fuel efficiency, as you'd expect, is redonkulous. Inside the city and traffic has been building up a little over 11 kilometers per liter. Now on the highway, stretch its legs, it's a nine speed automatic transmission and you're doing even over 18 kilometers per liter. It's ridiculous how just frugal this car is. I've taken this car for a week around Metro Manila and then after that week was over, I've taken it to Lipa and then the following day, I took it to Santa Rosa and then the following day after that, I took it to Clark. I still have yet to fill it up. I love it. It's like the Energizer Buddy. It just keeps going and going and going. It's amazing. I'll tell you, it feels really odd to be in an elevated car with a diesel engine up front, in the Philippines, mind you, and not feel like you're carrying so much weight behind. Because that's exactly what this is. And we, well, when you're in an elevated car with a diesel engine, you're thinking it's an SUV. No, not this. It's actually very freeing. It's like getting home at the end of the day, at the end of a very long day, and taking off your backpack. It's just, it feels so light. Speaking of light, the steering is actually very light. It's responsive, it's not dumb or anything, but it's light enough. It's not as light as, say, a Ford, because that's like the champion of being light. This is, it offers just the right amount of obedience slash resistance. Is that even a thing? Yeah, that's gotta be a thing. The ride too is actually pretty surprising. Yes, I understand, it is a CRV. It's a crossover, so you expect it to be uh, quite pliant on the road, but. It's the diesel engine really that throws you off. It's like, what the hell is going on? And then you realize, oh, it's the seven-seater diesel at CRV. Okay. 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 <laughs> I will say this though, that the isolation does need help. Not from the wind, not from the tire noise, but believe it or not, from the engine. Now I do remember from the previous generation, you could hear the diesel engine. But in this one, it just seems much more apparent. It's not as ridiculous as, let's say, cats doing it. No, nothing that bad. But it is apparent and might be something that you need to get used to. Thankfully, there are eight speakers inside this automobile, which will drown it out quick, fast, and in a hurry. A quirk that I've found while driving is that while rolling and you release the accelerator, you expect the car to slow down ever so slightly. Not in this particular car. See, well, it actually catches you. It revs up and yet still maintains the same speed, which is not necessarily a bad thing because obviously it gives you more control the higher the revs. The thing though is, is that it even does that in traffic. So you might need to sort of like change the way that you anticipate things that happen since we drive at such closer proximity when we're inside the city. So you might be on the brakes a little bit faster than you thought. It's not a deal breaker, no, nothing at all. Just something that I observed and I thought, well, maybe you'd like to know. 
Wow. Look, I'm not trying to blow sunshine up anyone's skirt or anything, but check this out. You're inside a crossover in the Philippines, so the ride is a heck of a lot better than the SUVs. You got a diesel engine up front that's ridiculously frugal. You've got ground clearance and you've got seven seats if you need them. Well, five plus two, really, but still, seven seats if you need them. In all honesty, this could actually be for those that aspire uh, in Filipino, a saan kapa car. I mean, think about it, right? It just might be. Upwards of 2 million Philippine pesos for a 7-seater diesel engine SUV is somewhat understandable. It stings a little when you're talking about a car of the same shape, but a heck of a lot smaller. Hear me out though. It's a Japanese seven-seater crossover powered by a diesel engine. And the icing is that not only is it the most well-equipped, but it's also the most affordable when you're talking about cars of this category, especially of the top of the line. So yeah, it may not be the knee-jerk reaction when it comes to Filipinos looking for a car and thinking of what it is that they need, but it could just be, just be the car that Filipinos want without actually even knowing.